is called knock knock who's there is your door locked are you sure so when a video entry system allows unauthorized access Jeroen will tell you about it please give him a round of applause oh, thank you very much um, I'm indeed Jeroen Hermans and uh, let's uh, start with uh, page one from uh, theory and presentations, a little bit of audience and participation. So I hope you're all ready for this. So let's start with knock knock. Doesn't matter. I'm already in. <laughs> Very good. Um, so yeah, let's uh, first uh, talk a little bit about me, who I am and uh, how I ended up here. My, uh, as I said, I'm um, um, my background is in electrical engineering, that's uh, what I studied. Um, and in 2002, I uh, started my own company um, as a technical consultancy. And it is a bit difficult to understand what it is exactly what I do, because in a word cloud you can see it is a lot. There's a lo lot of different technologies, and this is because I usually go to mostly non-technical companies, and uh, I solve their technical questions. About 10 years ago, I also uh, started uh, a, uh, a telecommunications company. And as far as I know, and please do correct me if I'm wrong, I am the only telecommunications company in Europe that can actually deliver emergency services 112 in, uh, in every member state in Europe. Um, if you want to talk to me uh, after the talk, you can find me in the, in the Swiss village, which is exactly there. So that is, uh, that is uh, very convenient. So let's talk a little bit about uh, how this uh, um, talk came to be. Well, as everyone, during COVID, I was uh, slightly bored. And uh, everyone knows that uh, a bored hacker is a very bad thing. So I was walking through my apartment, and I saw this on my wall. And I thought, interesting, what's in there? And how does it work? So uh, about five, five seconds later, it looked like this. And I thought, uh, huh, it gets even more interesting. So I thought, let's zoom in a little bit. So I did. And um, now four wires coming there. Well, two of them are from my doorbell. So that was not too, uh, too interesting. But the other two are from a bus. And um, I thought, that is interesting. I want to know more, more about this bus. Every sticker in this device says Comelit. And I was not. Um, familiar with the company Comenet. So I thought, who is it? And I went on their website. And I saw this is a screenshot from their website. It, they make a video entry technology. Um, so basically, the device that you just saw. And um, one of their uh, mottos is design, technology, and security, in that order. Um, <laughs> I thought, that's interesting. Too. So there's a lot of interesting stuff going on now. So I thought, um, OK, so I'm going to have a look at this bus system. And I found a few things on this bus. It uh, has uh, DC power on it to power all the different phones in the apartment building. It has audio baseband on it. That is interesting, because you could basically up hook up a USB audio card on it with the Raspberry Pi and record all the audio on the bus. Then at 25 kilohertz, which is probably chosen because it's a lot higher than the audio, there is binary data. And I'll show you a little bit later how that works. And the video is also on the bus. It is uh, frequency shifted, but it is baseband audio, uh, baseband video. OK, so now we know a little bit of the signals that are on this bus. So um, I'm going to dive a little bit into this. First, the audio. Well, it is baseband audio. So it's pretty much as easy as taking the bus, low pass filter it, put an amplifier on, and uh, you can use a headphone or evil recording device to, uh, to, uh, to use this audio. 
it's extremely easy, but I also think it is, um, yeah, it's, it's a very personal data. Someone rings the bell and asks my neighbor, uh, do you want to open the door? And they potentially tell their name and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I should not be able to receive this. So let's have a look a little bit at uh, binary data. Um, this is an actual scope picture of the binary data on the bus. Uh, and there's a lot going on. So let's uh, first see where it starts with. This is a so-called preamble. Um, the preamble is um, a 25 kilohertz tone. This signal is 25 kilohertz. It lasts for three milliseconds, then it's 17 milliseconds, it's quiet, and then the uh, address starts. And after the address is the actual command sent on the, uh, on the bus, and then there's a checksum. Now, you probably already saw that I say address 48, but 48 is not 4 times 0, 1, 1, and that is because it is a least significant bit um, system. I'm not entirely sure why they did this, it might be because they're using a specific type of processor, or maybe they thought it was because of, of frustration. I'm not entirely sure, but this is the how they do it. Um, the checksum, uh, that is basically the number of ones in the packet. So in this uh, particular situation, the green signal, the green part is the address has two ones, the red part is the command has also two ones, so the checksum is four, and if we take 0, 0, 1, that is actually 4. So the checksum is correct. After the packet that has been sent, you can see um, four um, bigger uh, pulses. And those are the acknowledged, basically, from, uh, from the far end. OK. Um, so we know pretty much what sort of signal is on there. Uh, now we need to recover it, because there's a 25 kilohertz signal on there. and you know, it's um, um, pulse length encoded. We still don't have all the data. And I think it is as easy as this. Um, it's, a, it's a PLL, a phase lock loop. And what we basically do is we run a voltage control oscillator at 25 kilohertz, and um, it is constantly pushed in the correct uh, fre frequency by the input signal, the VI. If we take the output of the loop filter, that is basically a DC signal, or DC-like signal, and that is a, um, the bits of, uh, of the signal. Um, so it's very easy to recover the 25 kilohertz uh, binary data from this uh, bus. OK, so now we have the audio baseband. We can listen to it with a headphone. Uh, we have the binary data, where, so we can see, OK, someone rang the doorbell for apartment 5. Um, so we have to get a little bit into the security part, and you probably still remember this part of the of the screenshot, the design, the technology, and security. Um, so obviously, I rang uh, Comelit, and I asked them for a reaction, and their reaction was, "We are going to the police because you are a hacker that is." wants money from us. And I said, no, 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 I don't want any money. But you know, discussion became a little bit um, sour. So uh, I went to the police and I said, please, don't spend any resources to find for three weeks a evil hacker that is trying to extort Comelit. It's me. And you know, just call me. And they actually really appreciated that. Um, so basically, this bus system, it's unauthenticated. There are no users. It's unauthorized. Because there are no users, you can also not say this user is allowed to do this. It's unencrypted. As we just saw, I can just see who is sending which packet. It's a broadcast system. So for every, on the bus, I can see everyone's signals. So I can see who opens the door. I can listen in on their conversations with the person at the front door. And if I would shift the video signal, I could actually see the video um, um, with a, for example, USB video grabber. Um, another interesting thing is it has no sender verification. So for example, if you have an apartment building with 10 apartments, and I just send a signal on this bus, hello, I'm um, apartment 200, 
and please open the door, it will actually open the door. So it actually doesn't care who's on the bus. Um, so yeah, um, I asked Komelit about this, and I said, um, so yeah, about a year ago, um, and I said, so do you want my help on this? On are you going to change anything on this? And I said, well, basically, we don't think it's very important what you found because um, it's um, it's not a uh, it's not a security product, so uh, so this is no, this is not a big deal. And then I thought, really? <laughs> um, let's have a look at how Comanit markets this product. So I found a um, on the website of Comanit a press release from 2020, and it actually says, Comanit achieves secured by design membership. Well, I've used this wording more often here, and I thought, that's interesting. <laughs> um, but then again, um, I, during my talk with Comelit, I also said this, and I said, yeah, yeah, but we have newer systems. This is a system from the 90s, and it's old, and I said, oh, really? So, which percentage of, the, um, of your systems that you are selling is still using this system? And they were like, it's more than 50%. So, it's still very current, it's very, still very used. And this, this bus system is called the Simple Bus. And if I zoom in a little bit on this press release, yeah, you can see that two of the door entry systems of Comelit are certified for this uh, in the UK, apparently. And one of them is the two-wire simple bus. So, there's something interesting going on here. Um, either the, the board of directors of Comelit Holland don't know about this press release, or... Um, yeah, let me put it politically, something else is going on. Um, so I think, definitely, in this system, there's room for improvement. Let me p put it mildly. And um, funny enough, today I looked at the website of Comelit, and I think they now think the same. So if you are looking for a job, and I can give you a few hints on what the job will be in the next two years. Okay, back to the why. So I asked Komenet, so why did you build it this way? Because it's not that difficult to put some of the restrictions in there. I mean, in the 90s it was possible to make encryption or do sender verification. Um, and I asked them and they said, well, this is basically because of the Bauber slides. So this is a Dutch. Uh, I don't want to call it a law, but it is a, um, it is a document that describes how you build a house. Um, and they said, if we build our system better than is needed in this Dutch law, the Bauberslide, then we will be more expensive than our competition and we won't sell any systems anymore. So this is the real reason that we are doing it this way. So I thought, let's have a look at the, at the Bauber slide, and, and here it is. It's a Dutch uh, uh, website from the government. Um, and it directly stems from Article 6.51, and I've translated it for the English-speaking people. It says, it literally says, prevention of common criminality in a building for living. And this document does indeed not speak about any security for the systems that are meant for security. So. There's definitely some improvement there. Um, I think it should be. Um, we have seen in Holland in the past few months definitely uh, a few incidents also with ministers. Um, so, yeah, um, lots of um, organizations are using the Comelet system and safety and security should be at the top of the list, I think. So, digitally and analog -wise, electrically, there is you know, some improvement possible. But surely, physical security in this system is better. So I looked at that too. And here we are. So this is an actual Comelit system. And at the right side, you can see the under part of the doorbell, I'll call it that. And you can see that it does not have any special screws in there. You can just use a five cent screwdriver from any uh, building material uh, uh, shop and just open this up. Two little screws, 
and you're in there. That's the left picture that you see there. And indeed, again, you see this bus there. But you also see other wires. And the other wires are actually going to the lock. So I ask Komalit, so what happens if I take a paper clip and I bridge the system from the bus to the lock? Does it open? And he said, yes, it does, but who opens this? <laughs> I thought, okay, fair point. I don't know that, but I'm surely it's, there are some really easy measures that you can take to improve this. So how important is it? How, I mean, is it just people's buildings, people's first front door, so you can get in the hallway where the, where the staircases are to the apartments, or is it something more important? Is it actually, can you get into buildings? And specifically, can you get into important buildings? So I looked into that too. So who is using Comelit? It's a lot of buildings. Sometimes it's, it's complete streets. But I made a nice selection here of Comelit systems that I found. And um, there are some important customers there. Um, you can see UNICEF is using it. Um, UNICEF, if you, at UNICEF, you can actually get into the building, so it's not just the first door that you get into. Uh, Landau, uh, it's a, a, a holiday park company. They are using that too, and again, you can get indoors there too. But maybe the most important one is on the right side there. Maybe it's a little bit difficult to read, but it actually says reclassering. And maybe the Dutch people now say, ooh, because this is an important company. It is actually the Dutch probation service. So it is actually tied to prison system in Holland. Um, so uh, last week I called them, um, and they thought it was really important, and um, um, they are going, definitely going to look into this. Um, from other um, companies I read, uh, reply, got a less than enthusiastic reply, and they just said, you know, just send an email to the info at uh, email address and uh, yeah, we'll see uh, if anyone wants to look at it. But um, yeah, so that's a lot of negative things. So I thought, um, is there any upside to this whole story? Well, I can think of one. And um, well, it would be really easy to connect it to your home automation system. I mean... Uh, it's, it's really easy to make your own uh, uh, home automation gateway for this and connect it to any of one of these pieces of software and you can actually um, open your door for someone while you're on holiday, you know, if that would be needed with your own app uh, without Google or Amazon um, having to use your data. Um, yeah, so I would like to end on a positive note. So Comenet did actually manage to build a system that has a really, really open in, in, uh, uh, interface. Thank you very much. Okay. As there is still some time left, if you have any questions, you can line up at the microphones in the middle of the room. Okay, front microphone, please, and step close to the microphone so that we can hear you clearly. Hi, thanks for the great talk. Um, you saw a number of Comolid systems in the wild. Do you happen to know whether those were the simple bus kind or the new, probably, maybe better kind? Um, the ones that I had in a presentation here were very likely the simple bus types. Uh, you can look it up on their website. They have a very nice pro.comelitgroup.com website and it has all of technical documentation. Uh, the newer types are actually IP based, so there's definitely a, a follow-up uh, presentation coming on that. Um, and they are easily recognizable, these uh, uh, IP based ones. And I see another question. Hello, yes, I do like this. Um, how difficult would it be for you, standing on the street, to attach something to it so you ring up all the apartments and the video signal is, for instance, Rick Ashley? <laughs> um, I think it would be doable. 
Um, the audio, that would definitely be doable. Uh, the binary data, call all the apartments, that would be doable, although I don't think that you can actually call them uh, all at once. Um, um, probably because if you call the next one, then the connection to the first one is actually cut. Uh, because it's a bus system, you can't send multiple signals. Uh, the video, you would have to actually have to frequency shift it, so it becomes a little bit more difficult, but probably also doable. Um, so yeah, if everyone, anyone wants to do that, please do let me know, because I would love that. <laughs> yeah, we should, we should do that. Do like an open source <laughs> port where you can go out and then sort of time delay so you're out of the place and it'll just stop, start ringing them one at a time. Fan oh, Fantastic cool. idea. <laughs> Absolutely. Are there any more questions? Yes, front microphone, please, again. Do you think that uh, when they use uh, secured uh, screws so that you can't open it uh, that easily from the from the seat, that then the, the problems are at least uh, mitigated? No. No, it's many, many steps that you want to take. It starts with the screws. You also don't want the door open relay available if you remove those two screws, um, because you could also use a big hammer, of course. Um, so it's many, many steps. Um, the bus itself, you want that more secure. Um, yeah, so it's the whole system, basically. Uh, I mean, uh, compared then uh, a, a, a nice large brick that you can throw to the window? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but then again, if you sell a system specifically, say, um, security by design, um, and you make a system with these kinds of properties, um, me personally, I would feel bad about that. So, yeah, um, um, I think the most important thing Comunet has to do is market it very differently now. Right, thank you. Okay, anyone else having a question? If that is not okay, the case, please give a warm round of applause to the speaker. Okay.